Good morning, everybody. It is Pastor Matt Stokes from Coastal Christian, and I am bringing you the morning meditation from Swan Lake in Galloway. And um, I was heading into the gym. I took Laura to work. We've got a birthday party tonight. So my logistics are a little different this morning. So I thought, hey, just bring the video and just hit it from here. So here's what I wanted to talk about just for a few minutes this morning. <clears throat> I usually can't... <clears throat> excuse me, find the time on Saturday to come and kind of do some of the work that I'd like to as far as giving you a precursor for Sunday. But here's what I, I'm going to try to get into this on Sunday morning. But if I don't, let me just say it now. Paul is talking to the Corinthians and there's a huge conflict between them uh, emotionally because some of them are being pulled away by other leaders that were trying to like win the affections of the Corinthian people. He visited them. You know he wrote the letter 1 Corinthians to them. He's on his way back and forth to Macedonia. He writes another letter to them. We actually don't have that letter, but the letter is actually referred to in another place in Paul's writings. So we know that Paul actually wrote a letter we don't have to the Corinthians. And then he was going to visit them again, and he didn't visit them. And we'll talk more about why he didn't visit them later. But he didn't feel pressed to go there. He felt pressed to not go there. So what does he do? He writes Second Corinthians. And he wrote Second Corinthians because while he was on his journey as a missionary, I believe in the Macedonian region, he received word about the Corinthians that when he didn't show up and told them that he wasn't coming, and he, that they were hurt. And all he did was write that other letter, that mysterious letter. The scholars refer to it as the severe letter because apparently what he wrote was hard for them to hear. And their reaction to it was negative. And some of them were leaving Paul in terms of their faithfulness and in terms of their, they were leaving him in terms of their loyalty. So that's happening. And so Paul writes to them here, and this is what we're going to talk about on Sunday. Tell me, um, I see some of you are coming on. Tell me if this is too windy where I am, because if it is, I'll just take it inside and we can finish up for a few minutes. Here's the point. He writes to them, 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, somewhere around 15, 16, 17. And he said, I was going to come to you, but I didn't come to you. Um, and then he goes on and says, now, do you think that I'm fickle in my decision making? Do you think I'm a fair weather friend? Do you think that I was just cavalier in my decision making? He said that as God is true and everything that God says is true, we make decisions and based on truth. And what we say, do you think that I'm someone who says yes when I really mean no and says no when I really mean yes? When God says yes and no, just the same when we say yes or no, that's what we mean. And then he says this interesting piece in there where he says, and some of you are familiar with this because it's become a popular worship song. He says, because all of God's promises in Christ are yes and amen. And the, and the chorus that we sing is all your promises are yes and amen. Okay, what does that mean? See if you find this as interesting as I do. What he's saying is, is that Every plan that you and I have might change, right? My plans totally changed today. I went to bed last night and I had a plan for how my morning routine was going to work. And that plan didn't happen. Am I disappointed? No, and here's why. Um, although I didn't get to follow through in my neuroplastical, uh, you know, context of my regimented strategic morning experience, something else happened. But I ended up and spending more time with Laura in the morning and driving her to work and being able to like play some music in the car and kind of just smile together and talk about summertime, right? That would not have happened if I kept my routine. So the point is, is that we make plans, but those plans might change. The Lord may lead us in another direction and being spiritually sensitive to the Lord's leading is like half of life, isn't it? Okay. so. The Lord didn't lead Paul to go back to Macedonia. The Lord didn't lead me um, to do my morning routine today. And so what we're saying is, is those plans might change. Here's what, right, watch this. This changes. Here's what doesn't change. Here's what's rock solid. God's promises, right? 
God's promises never change. Every promise that God has ever given us, the answer to those promises are yes and amen in him, and the him is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the answer to every question. Jesus Christ is the solution to every problem. Well, wait a minute. Jesus Christ is the solution to my problem. He's the solution to my cancer. Because I have cancer, and I believe in Jesus, and I'm not being healed. Okay, that's because being healed from your cancer, restoring your marriage from full-fledged divorce, bringing back a loved one who has already passed on may not be God's plan, right? That is not God's plan, but you have something else other than what was your plan, your hopes, your dreams, right? Um, personally, yours, and that is you have God's promises. What's God's promise? God's promise is that when you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. God's promise is, is that, you know, um, that he who began a good work in you is going to fulfill that work and complete, continue to complete that work until, let me see some reactions are now, until the day of Christ Jesus. God's plan is, is that, and we know oidas intuitively, the Greek word oidas, we know intuitively that, um, all things are working together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Okay, wait. I'm listening to you. You're, you're trying to explain something about my plans and God's promises. And you're saying that my plans may not happen, but God's promises always happen. And then you started quoting verses where God's promises are. And then you quoted, Matt, you quoted Romans 8.28. Okay. Uh, all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Okay. Yeah, I did. Well, here's my concern, Pastor. Um, uh, it's not good. Okay. My marriage is still divorced. Okay. Uh, my, my cancer stage is still four. Okay. So like I, I'm still terminal. I still have this chronic illness. I still, my child is still prodigal. I'm still um, feeling confused about where my occupation is leading in my career and that's not being fixed and I'm wondering about my bills. Okay. Um, I see Betsy says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Yes, that's another really great promise. So here's my point. You might say, well, then how can all things work together for good? Well, with, here's what we normally say. We normally say, well, just wait. And in the end, you'll see how God worked this together for good. Um, and a month from now, a year from now, a decade from now, you're going to see how God worked this together for good. And, and here's what I'm saying. And this might be paradigm shifting for you because it is for me. You may never see that. You, know, you may never see anything good. Um, David cries out that he would see the good, you know, the goodness of God in the land of the living. Why does he cry that out? Because you might not. You might not see what it is. Watch this now. You might not see what it is that you define as good. Because what is what are you really defining as good? Okay. Your plan. <laughs> your plan for your marriage to be restored. restored. Your plan for, for your cancer to be cured. That is what you consider good. What God is considering good, read Romans chapter 8. What's happening in the passage. What God is considering good is for you to be formed into the image of his son, for you to take on the likeness of his son, for you to be a reflection of his son, Jesus. So God's given us these promises that no matter what happens, every promise that God's given you in Jesus is going to be yes and amen, and that is good. What What's good? What's good to God is you, when he looks down upon you, seeing the image and the reflection of his son, that's what's good, right? That's what to him he says is good. So, and look, when are you going to see that as good? Well, I'll tell you the people that are going to see that as good. It's good, for, it's good not to follow my plan. It's good to just actually trust in God's promises. You know who really believes that? Those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Don't forget the second half of Romans chapter 8. And we know all things work together for good. For who? Well, for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Because if you are like sick in love with God 
and you know that you're called by God and that you have a purpose from God, then you're going to know that it's good when God continues to tell you to trust in him and keep his promises and be a reflection of who Jesus is. So that's, that's what's good. God has a promise and he says, okay, there's something more important than your plan. Okay, what is that? Because I thought that if I committed myself to you, then all my plans were going to happen. Now, what's more important is that um, Jesus is revealed to you in the midst of whatever your chaos or your crisis is. And then you come to Christ and then Jesus is within you. And then as you continue to work on your faith journey, your sanctification journey, what happens next? Christ is then revealed not just to you, but now Christ is revealed through you to other people. And other people are getting massively blessed because you're trusting in the promises of God. Because you're in the context of Christ. Not because life is good and you've got a good a good house and a good wife and your kids are good and you your car runs good like that's not what life is about and if you pursue those things inevitably you're going to be disappointed because it is inevitable that your plan is going to fail all right our plans fail i mean if you read the bible you will see great men and women of god who have who have a plan and that plan does not work right Joseph had a plan he told his brothers you guys I'm gonna be a ruler okay God gave me a dream okay that didn't happen for a very long time okay Moses thought that he was going to be the leader of the children of Israel and he ends up killing an Egyptian and hides him in the desert and runs to the backside of the sand for 40 years right so, I mean, like, maybe Daniel had a plan, Isaiah had a plan. Then the next thing you know, they're, they're taken into captivity by the Babylonians. I'm saying, like, there are lots of people that have a plan. We have idealistic images of how we think life's going to go and what we're going to do. And remember, we used to, I used to talk about, we played that origami game about what car we're going to drive and what house we're going to have. And I'm saying, in, inevitably, you will find that your plan fails. And what we ultimately do when the plan fails is, is that we lean over here onto the promises of God. Because we know that he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. We know that he said, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. You know that he said, you know the plans I have for you, right? So, and you might say, okay, first of all, that's Old Testament, Jeremiah 29, 11, to plans to prosper you, right? Okay, well, wait, well, what is prosperity? Well, for the ancient Israelites, prosperity might have been agricultural, right? It might have been, um, uh, it might have been the legacy that you were leaving. But for the believer, the plans that God has for us, we know ultimately when they were under Roman tyranny is when Christianity was flourishing. Okay, nobody was prospering. What's Jeremiah 29, 11? Ultimately, the heart of God is that you would prosper eternally, that you would prosper spiritually. What God wants to prosper in you is the part of you that lives forever. Every part of every one of us has a soul and every one of us is going to spend forever somewhere. God wants to give you promises that are not dependent upon your circumstance. He wants to give you promises that are dependent upon your eternity, upon your eternal destiny, right? That's where God is focused and thank God that he is. So we look at the stretch and the span of like our entire lives and like, Here's God's plan and purpose for us. Here's God's destiny and, and meaning for us. And, and then look at this. Here's the line, right? And then across this, you have all the affectations you have on other people, positive and negative. And then you have all the uh, affects people have on you. Okay, here it is. And God says, okay, this is the plan. Now, I'm going to now hold on. Here's the plan. I'm, well, go ahead, God. Do what you want because you're good and I know your plans are good. Okay, you really believe that? You really believe that, Matt? Okay, hold on tight. Hold on. I'm going to go like this, <laughs> right? And he does this to the plan. Here's my internal, entire life and eternal destiny. And God takes something that I thought was a sure thing. I thought was a slam dunk. And God goes, Meh. and then we go, no, 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 right? Like we freak out. And God's like, oh, no, no. I know it doesn't seem good right now. Hebrews chapter 12, right? I know it doesn't seem good right now. But it's going to bring about goodness if you allow yourself to be under the hardness of this moment. Because what I want to do is, is I want to eradicate from your life your own personal self-absorbed plans. And I want to instill in you 
the beauty of my eternality and my promises, right? So like, how does that happen? Well, that happens on us. Stop trusting in ourselves. Stop trusting in the plan that we made. And we begin to trust in the promises God has. I hope on Sunday that I'm able to articulate that in a way that makes sense to you. If it's making sense, I'd love for you to try to summarize what I just said and write it back in the chat. Give me two or three sentences and I'm going to let you guys go. Give me two or three sentences that help me know if this is helpful to you. Because I really want to center down on that Sunday. And for me right now, it's early in the morning, but for me right now, this is a hard concept to try to articulate. And also I really feel if you get it, it is a paradigm shifting concept when you realize that, you know, God's plan is not to make you happy and healthy, right? God's plan is to have you lean on his promises to make you holy so that you like, so that you look like Jesus in every way. And not only does that honor God because you're loyal to him and faithful to him, but it also blesses other people because they see the work of Christ in you. And then they desire to have that very transformative work happen in their own lives as well. So I hope that's helpful to you guys. Um, and we'll try it again on Sunday morning as I kind of pen these things out. And um, that's all I got. I hope you guys have a beautiful weekend. It looks like it's fixing to be a beautiful day. And um, my nephew's um, graduation party is tonight. And then, uh, yeah, so the weekend ends up being pretty full. But I'm looking forward to Sunday morning and definitely looking forward to seeing you there.